I'm a president of a venture company that develops artificial intelligence software. My staff say I'm very energetic and maverick. I work for I's company. She's my boss. I'm always in trouble with her unreasonable demands. I am a patent examiner at the Japan Patent Office. Ota is a junior in college. We will give useful advice to I and Ota to protect their AI software. Let's learn the basics of patent examination. This is a flowchart of the patent examination procedure. After filing a patent application, when the applicant requests for examination, a substantive examination starts. If the examiner finds no reasons for refusal, the decision to grant a patent is made. If the reasons for refusal are not solved even after several rounds of communication between the applicant and the examiner, the decision of refusal is made. The decision of refusal can be challenged in the appeal board and the courts. Have you read the AI and IoT case examples that Mr. Shinsaki gave us? What? Me again? Who else? Make sure you understand it all. Hmm, claims requirements for description, inventive step, patent eligibility. Mm, that's a parade of terms I've never heard before in my life. There are lots of difficult technical terms unique to patents. Before studying AI and IoT case examples, why don't you take a look at the JPO e-learning site? Is it on the JPO website? Yes, you can learn the basics of patent examination by watching online videos, all for free. There are also exercises for you to try. I'll definitely try that with I. The JPO e-learning site provides online video training materials. There is no way I'm not using this. How's it going, learning about patents? I'm getting the hang of it. So we write the details of our invention in description, claims, abstract, and drawings, and then file a patent application, right? I didn't know that there's a document called claims, other than the description that gives a detailed explanation of the invention. Promoting innovation through the protection and utilization of inventions. A patent application consists of claims, description, and drawings. Claims contain the scope of the patent rights for which protection is sought, so that they work to protect inventions. Descriptions and drawings contain a detailed explanation of the inventions so that they promote the utilization of inventions. In principle, claims, description, Abstract and drawings are made available to the public 18 months after the filing. Even if you enter a good invention in the description, it won't be protected by a patent right unless you describe it so as to be included in the claims. I understand. We have to be careful not to make our claims too narrow. How to consider the claims. This patent application includes three claims. Claim one, a cup made of metal. Claim two, a cup made of aluminum. Claim three, a cup of claim one in which said metal is copper. Describe the invention for each claim. Claim one includes a cup made of any metal, including metals not explicitly mentioned in the examples, such as stainless steel. Claim 2 includes only a cup made of aluminum. It is also allowed to describe the invention in the form of reference, as with Claim 3. So even if the same invention is disclosed, the scope of rights changes depending on how we write the claims. I got 
it. We should just write a broad claim, right? Well, I... I'm afraid you're missing the point. Broad claims are likely to lack novelty or inventive step. This patent application includes two claims. Claim 1, a cup made of metal. Claim 2, a cup made of aluminum. Let's suppose that the examiner finds a prior art, a cup made of stainless steel. In this case, claim 1 lacks novelty. Claim 2 has novelty. Stainless steel is not specified in the claims or descriptions of the application, but it is included in the metal. A broad claim is difficult to differentiate from the prior art and is likely to be denied novelty or inventive step. It is often the case for applicants that a broad claim is initially tried and then amended to differentiate from the prior art cited by the examiner. Make sure you include in your claims the points that differentiate your invention from the prior art. Mr. Shinsaki, I heard that when writing a broad claim, we have to be careful about the description requirements. What exactly does that mean? Aren't there several types of description requirements? Yes, there's a clarity requirement, support requirement, and enablement requirement. Wow, hi! You've been studying hard, haven't you? I have no idea what all those requirements mean, though! I was a little drowsy and... <laughs> So, in the end, what are the problems with a broad claim in terms of the description requirements? If you use ambiguous expressions to broaden a claim, or if you overly broaden the claim to include inventions that are not disclosed in the description, it violates the description requirements. What are description requirements? Requirements for claims. Clarity requirement. Claimed inventions must be clear. Avoid being unclear about what constitutes patent infringement due to the unclear scope of rights. It violates the clarity requirement if the scope of rights become unclear in an attempt to broaden the claims. Support requirement. Claimed invention must be described in the description, detailed explanation of the invention. It is against the purpose of the patent system to grant protection to inventions which are not described in the description as available technical information. As a result of broadening the claims, it violates the support requirement if it includes a configuration that cannot solve the problem of the application. Requirements for description. Enablement requirement. The detailed explanation of the invention in the description must enable a person skilled in the art to work the invention. Otherwise, the invention will not be available as technical information. As a result of broadening the claims, if the claimed invention includes something that cannot be carried out by a person skilled in the art, even by referring to the detailed explanation of the invention, it will be a violation of the enablement requirement. Are you saying that we shouldn't write a broad claim after all? No, I'm saying that you should write a claim that is consistent with what you disclosed in the description. If you want to write a broad claim, you should enrich the embodiments or examples in the detailed explanation of the invention in the description. Patent Application Documents this figure shows the details of a patent application document compared to a research paper. For example, if you write a claim with a broad conceptual term, such as metal, describe embodiments or examples of various metals to the extent that a person skilled in the art would recognize that the problem of the invention would be solved with metals in general. By the way, who do you mean by a person skilled in the art? Do you mean someone who is smart or great? You know, someone who is a representative of the company, like me? It's a hypothetical person who has the common general knowledge in the technical field of the invention. 
In fields involving cross-sectional technologies or complex technologies, the hypothetical person would be a team composed of experts. The inventive step is also examined based on the standard of a person skilled in the art. Is there anything else we should be careful about the AI-related inventions we're developing? Be careful about patent eligibility. Yes, it was mentioned in the AI and IoT case examples, but it was difficult for me to understand. The patent system protects technical ideas. A claim that does not contain technical elements is rejected on the grounds that the claimed invention is not an invention, i.e. it is patent ineligible. What do you mean by saying it's not an invention? That sounds pretty rude. It's important to know whether or not the claim involves the creation of technical ideas utilizing the laws of nature. If that is written in the description but not written in the claims, the claimed invention would be patent ineligible. Patent eligibility. The Japanese Patent Act defines invention as a highly advanced creation of technical ideas utilizing the laws of nature. Let's review this definition part by part. Utilizing the laws of nature. No laws of nature per se. Anything going against laws of nature. Artificial arrangement in addition to not utilizing laws of nature. Technical idea. No personal skills, such as those acquired through personal experience and which cannot be shared with others as knowledge due to lack of objectivity. Creation. No. A mere discovery of a microorganism in nature. Okay, a microorganism that is artificially isolated from a natural product. Highly advanced. This is used just to differentiate invention from device under the Utility Model Act and is disregarded in determination. So, man-made arrangements like business models and game rules are patent ineligible? Basically, you are right. But even ideas related to business or games can be patent eligible if it contains technical elements. When is patent eligibility likely to be an issue in software-related inventions? In software-related inventions, the technical element is what kind of information processing the computer is supposed to perform. However, if the claim only describes the purpose of the use of the computer without describing the specific information processing, the claimed invention would be patent ineligible. Here is a summary of this video. A patent application contains the description, claims, and abstract. Drawings are not essential. The claims describe the scope of the patent rights for which protection is sought. The claims must meet the clarity and support requirements. The description should include a detailed explanation of the invention. The description must meet the enablement requirement. Broad claims are more likely to be rejected as novelty or inventive step. Also, be careful of the description requirements for broad claims. The Patent Act protects inventions, which is a highly advanced creation of technical ideas utilizing the laws of nature. You can find case examples for AI IoT related technologies on the JPO website. You can read the rest of this manga on the JPO website. Please check it out!